welcome to hey. You Be The Judge, where the objective of this show is to put it out there and let you be the judge. I know everybody hey. got their beliefs, but don't hate on mine. Now check out this content. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Iceberg Green, welcome to You Be The Judge. So today, you know, I'm going to go in on a few black politicians that's in uh, positions of power that don't do shit because they some marks. And uh, you notice that... Uh, they always talk about these churches and people stomp with them. They was part of this party, Martin Luther King, this person was. And you notice they not talking about nobody else that they stomp with. And most of the people they stomp with are gone, dead or something. So ain't nobody really to here to just be like, yeah, And if they were living, do you think they probably would still be cool with them? We don't know that. But um, this dude, we're going to start off with Amos Brown. But we got... Jim Clyburn up next and both of these dudes these are the baby boomers uh the super boot licks they like they've been licking boots for a minute so they got it down packed but anyway let me start off with old Amos Brown he's a California uh pastor he's been the one talking about reparation but don't want to give us no cash with it he just keep yeah he got it got us fucked up too but uh check this out and I'll be back we represent the masses we preach to thousands every Sunday morning. And I might say parenthetically here that maybe you should be sensitized to that by now for when election time comes around, basically you politicians will make a beeline to the black church but not in your white church on Sunday morning. Well, Reverend That's Brown, I probably are. spent as much time in your black church as maybe even you have sometimes on occasion. I, uh, well, because you, I, know that, that, you know it's where the votes are, and that's where the uh, voting population I'm very, is. I'm very familiar with your church. Now, what I want to know, though, without giving me political advice on where I should and shouldn't be. No, I'm not giving you advice. I want to Okay, so this one he has some pep in his step. You know, he's a lot older now. Well, he started off hot. He started off, ooh, he was ready for his black bull. Man, he broke him down quick with the white supremacy look dead in his face. Man, what are you talking about? I done sold dope on your block more than you. Man, he said, did you hear what he just said? Man, I never seen it. And that interview looked like it was pretty old, man. It actually don't matter, man. You, oh. So this is what I'm talking about when I say, Mark. So do you, are these the type of people you want to see fighting for you? If something go down, they just going to let that happen? They ain't got my back. I don't see it. But uh, let me go ahead into Jim Clyburn because this dude right here, man, check this one out. You judge this one and you tell me what you think about black men in politics now. We need to upgrade. And, you know, but uh, check this out. You want to know if you support reparations? I'm sorry? You want to know if you support reparations? I support reparations right in that name. Y'all need to learn what reparation is. Y'all keep talking about a word. What is it? it means to repair. It's cash, being cash, cash payments for all. Hell no. <laughs> you never get it. Why not? That's why we need support. You got a lot of power. You will never get it. You have a lot of leverage. Let me ask you a question. You get our support. We have, we've been dedicated to this Will you listen? Will you listen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If you are mulatto and you are allowed to get an education and this person is not and not allowed to get an education, how will you measure which, which one to do what? I was allowed to get an education, but I'm still... But that's not the point. Now. You're talking about the law. You're talking about the law. You're talking about my wife, whose grandfather was white. And therefore, her mother could get educated, but her daddy was African and could not be educated. How do you measure that? But you got, but Africans get educated now. Okay. You should go get them educated right now. We're living in Africa. You're living in America. Okay. I know you, you, you got more sense than I understand. See how he tries to throw him off? Oh, he tries to throw him off. Look, look, let me tell you. Back in the day when my uncle met my auntie, they was able to get married and one person stayed over here, the other person, ain't that reparations? This dude, man, I, man, I'm telling you, that was hilarious, man. That's what I'm talking about. Black people. So do we want this? Speaking for that, they don't got our back. They just said it. You could be sitting somewhere struggling right now and this dude just said, nah, I ain't doing we have an opportunity right here now, y'all, to get us right. Equality, they keep talking about equality and all that shit. What's equal? Man and women rights ain't fucking equal. So what's equal? Ain't, it ain't never been equal rights, man. And until we work for it hard, 
we ain't gonna have none. And this is the type of people that I'm talking about, man. I don't like this, man. And they all up in somewhere right now while we down here. And this dude talking about, hell no, we ain't going to help them. Same thing with Kamala. So what are we supposed to do, y'all? If you, if you, all right, so let me see. If you were a group and uh, let's say white person or Asian or Indian or whatever you are, Creole, I don't care. And your president, your senator, your preacher, pastor got up there and said, I am not going to do nothing for y'all. But you're going to keep putting money in this church. You're going to keep um, uh, giving me money toward my campaign. But I ain't doing nothing for you. You're going to keep voting for me. You're going to keep my name in your mouth, but I ain't finna do nothing for you. Where that happened at? That's what we doing, y'all? I'm not doing that. But let me get back to this content. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wake up Raphael Warnock. Yeah, I'm going to do him next. But uh, check this content out and I'll be back. The other day, because this is America, the 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton went to the polls and picked her youngest son to be a United States senator. Reverend Raphael Warnock making history as the first black senator in Georgia and the state's first Democratic senator in more than a decade after unseating Republican incumbent Kelly Leffler. The 51-year-old is a native of Savannah. He's one of 12 children and a graduate of Morehouse College, an all-men's historically black college. Warnock was the first in his family to graduate college. At 35 years old, Warnock became the youngest pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church. This 134-year-old church is a prominent staple in United States history. It is the same church Martin Luther King Jr. once pastored, as well as where late Georgia Congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis's funeral was held, marking it a haven for civil rights. First black this, first black that, Supreme Court, Senator. What about the first uh, black uh, hospital? What about the first black unionized bank? What about the first black owned sports team? What about the first black, uh, I don't, I mean, do you think of some that's besides a, a person? Because they don't do it. They, a, a person, the first black person never does it. I just got to keep it real. The first black, they don't do it. And this is an example because I'm sure if you're in Atlanta, you, you feel in the same way we feeling in Cali when it comes to the economy, the hate hate crime bill, things we don't have. I'm sure you're struggling with it too. But let me get back to this content, y'all. When your skin is the weapon, there is no right answer. Rayshard Brooks ran and he's dead. George Floyd did not run and he's dead. We have 2.3 million people in American prisons and jails. We have twice that many on probation and parole. Rayshard Brooks was not simply running from the police. He was running from a system that makes slaves out of people. A system that marks people with the name felon. Once you're marked with that, in spite of heroic efforts to redeem your life, that sense of being maligned is inescapable. We close all of the available doors of reentry into a dignified life and a responsible citizenship. And so the outcomes, the high rates of recidivism in our prisons is actually quite predictable. That's American chattel slavery redux, repackaged for a new moment. This is about the fact that the land of the free is the incarceration capital of the world. So I get a, I get a lot of people in the comments, you know, talking about how I go in on a uh, Kamala and I go hard on, and I go in on everybody that don't got black Americans best interest in mind. I go in on everybody. I'm an independent. So I have a right to go in on everybody that don't have black people's best interests in mind. And I'm talking about policies, not just one policies. We are due, overdue for policies, not just one. Everyone else got policies. There's a difference between critiquing and doing a proper analysis of what you have done and being intentionally destructive. Mayor Adams is pushing back on an editorial in the New York Post. The paper accuses City Hall of using a firm with little real world experience to administer its new migrant debit card pilot program. It gives 500 migrant families prepaid cards for food and baby supplies. But the Post reports migrants could actually get much more, up to $10,000 apiece. 
And the company administering the program says it has no experience in this type of giveaway, according to the Post. The mayor says when the city awarded the contract, it looked for city-based businesses owned by minorities. Oh, Eric Adams, last but not least, New York, New York, New York. He turned the patch out of them. I, I, whew, he opened the floodgates up in New York. I'm talking about, man, did you, did you just see that? They getting bread and all types of stuff, man. Then I can imagine the people out there that's actually been suffering for a very, very long time. And someone comes in their community and immediately is not suffering or dealing with none of the adversities that they're dealing with because of the taxpayers that they granddaddy, auntie, uncle went to work for that get took out their pocket to give to these people that honestly shouldn't be here yet. How about that? They didn't go through the process, but again, here we go. Here we go. Get ready for whatever flood it opened uh, this time, y'all. Because it was a reason why it opened. It wasn't. It didn't just open by uh, by uh, just it opened for a reason. They opened it, and this is one of the guys that turned this uh, city state into a sanctuary uh, state. New York City sanctuary. Well, come on, live here. California be doing it too. So that's where all our resources go. Or Ukraine or Israel. We don't get none of that. We still got to go work hella hard. Hell, I'm talking about super. I just started going back to school just because. I'm telling y'all, you got to do something nowadays, you know? Because you'll spend a lot of idle time thinking about this shit. And how we don't have people in our best interest. And I'm talking to my black Americans out there. We don't have it like that. We have been and we're going to make progress right now. Because we're dealing with a, a, a twist of this uh, government. It's twisting and turning. you know. So we got to stay on cold with each other. And if you don't know about some shit man. Seek the resources. I, I've been trying to make sure I fact check. And deal with reliable sources. A lot of time with all this AI. This fake news and stuff. You got to know. You got to know, man. Don't just go by what you see on TV and them telling you, oh, this poll, that poll. Go with what your heart is telling you, man. Don't try to go with, oh, color this or this person's the, the boogeyman or they going to do this project this. You're already going through project whatever. This made this project 2024. And I don't know what project 2025 going to feel like, but if it feel anything like this, I mean, goodness gracious. I'm just saying. So we already living in a project 2024. Let's worry about that project. You're already in 2025. Let's worry about project 2024. Hey. Okay, so I just put it out there and you be the judge. Again, I'm not going to hate on hey. your content, so don't hate on mine. All right, y'all. I'm just getting paid. I do this every day. Hey. Ooh.